Hiya folks, in our last video we went over the basics of Illustrator and some of the tools and functions the program offers. This time we're going to build more onto that by making this graphic. This is a beginner level project and even if you haven't seen our Illustrator basics video, you should be able to follow along easy enough. In this project, you're going to learn a bit more about editing and deforming shapes, you'll learn how to edit strokes, how to work with text, and we'll also touch on Illustrator's image trace function. Okay, so before I start my project, I'm going to download the lesson folder, so that way I have my project files downloaded and ready to go. So in Illustrator, I'm going to go to File, New, and I'm going to make a new document. And up in this dialog window, you'll see a bunch of categories here. These have a bunch of preset document settings. I'm going to go to Print and select Letter. That way, my color mode and raster effects and everything else will match up with what I want. I want to change a few things in this preset, though. First thing is I'm going to go up to the top here and just type in the name of my file. Then in the measurement units, I want to change it from points to inches. And I want the width to be 11 and the height to be 9. Then that's everything I should need to change. I just hit create. And I've got my document open. First thing you're going to want to do is go to Window, Workspace, and just make sure it's set to Essentials Classic because that is the workspace I'm using and it'll just make it a little bit easier for you to find the menu options that I'm messing with. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our rectangle tool. The shortcut for that should be M on your keyboard. And I'm just going to click and drag to make my rectangle here. Now you'll notice there are some numbers down in that gray box there telling you how big your rectangle is. Try and get it 10 inches wide and 8 inches tall, but if you can't get it quite right, you can always go up to the top bar here and click on where it says transform, and it'll give you the x and y position of your shape and also the width and height. So before I go in and edit those, I'm just going to turn that chain link off, and just going to make sure this is 10, and this is 8. And I'll turn that chain link back on so that way if I change these dimensions later, it'll stay proportional. So now with my shape still selected, I want to move this so that way it's sitting in the middle of my document here. And I'm going to do that by using my align panel. Now I use the align panel a lot so I just keep it in a floating dock off to the side on my workspace here. If you don't know where your align panel is or you can't find it, you, you can just go to window and align and then it will open up for you. But with the shape still selected, go ahead and find a line 2 in your align panel. If you don't see it, just go to those three lines stacked on top of each other in the upper right, and just click Show Options, and it should give you that option to change the align 2. So on align 2, just make sure it's set to align to artboard. And then we're going to align the horizontal centers, which is that second option in the top row. And we're going to align the vertical center, which is the second from the right on the top row. And now it's saying smack dab in the middle of our canvas here. Next thing I'm going to change is I don't want these hard corners on my rectangle here. I want to give it a rounded corner. Now if you have your shape selected, you should notice there are these dots that are set into the corners of your shape. If you click on those and drag them inwards, that lets you control the curvature of your corners here. Now go ahead and try and get it as close to 0.7 as you can. If you have trouble getting it just right, you can always go up and click on Shape. And these settings here let you control the curvature of the corner. So you can see uh, mine is set to 0 0.701. I'm just going to make sure it's set to 7. And as long as I have this chain link turned on, they'll all be linked to each other. If you wanted to give each corner a individual curve, or you wanted it to curve at different rates, you could turn off this chain link and put in individual values for each corner. 
So again, if you want to change the shape of the corner, just grab the corner widget or the blue dot there and drag inward. Or you can go up to this top bar here, click on shape, and edit the values that way. Next, we're going to mess with the colors of our rectangle here. So go ahead and find your swatches panel. If you can't find that off to your right, just go to window and swatches and it'll open up for you. So with your shape still selected, in your swatches panel, click on the solid square. You'll know you have the solid square selected when it's brought to the front. This will make sure that we're only changing the fill of our shape here. And what we're going to do is go ahead and in the top row here, go to the second to last swatch and click on that. And now the fill of our rectangle should be a yellow orange. So a benefit to using swatches is one, it allows you to color multiple objects really quickly. But another benefit is if you want to switch out a color, you can just double click on the swatch and you can change the color in this menu here. And every instance where you've used that swatch, it will change those colors as well. So go ahead and double click on that swatch that we just used to fill our rectangle. And we're going to change the color on it. So set cyan, which is the C to nine, then it's going to be seven nine and zero and it should make this light gray color and if you check mark preview you can see how it looks before you hit okay if you're happy with it just hit okay and it will change every instance where that swatch is being used so with our rectangle selected we're going to switch over to our color panel the color panel looks like a painter's palette if you don't see it or can't find it, just go to Window and Color. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the stroke color. So go ahead and click on the square that has the hole in it. You'll notice you have it selected if it moves to the front of the solid square. So with that stroke selected, we are going to make it a green color. So for cyan, it's going to be 55. Magenta is going to be 25. Yellow will be 100, and then set the black to zero. And you should have this yellow green color. Now we're going to use this yellow green color for other objects later on. So I'm going to go back to my swatches panel, and I want to make this a swatch so that way I can easily grab that color over and over. So in this panel, I'm just going to go to this new button. It's the square with the plus sign in it. And I'm making sure that the stroke is selected. And if I hit that new button, you'll see it has a new swatch dialog and it's using that green color we just made. Just make sure the color type is set to process color, color mode is CMYK. You shouldn't have to change any of the numeric values and then just hit OK. And now that green color is in our swatches and it'll be really easy to grab that color over and over again. Next is we're going to edit the stroke a bit more. And what I mean by that is we're going to edit how it looks rather than the color of it. So up in the top here, go ahead and click on the word stroke. And what we're going to do is make sure the stroke weight, which is how thick is it, it is, make sure that's set to three. And then go down to where it says dash line and hit that checkbox right there. And make sure the dash is set to three point and then just click in the gap. Don't type anything. And you should notice that a dash line appears around our rectangle now. So you can go ahead and just deselect everything. Next, we're going to work a little bit with layers. So go ahead and find your layers panel. If you can't find it, go ahead and go to window and layers. And if you double click on where it says layer one, we're going to rename that to background. And we're going to make a new layer. Make sure this new layer is on the top. And I'm going to double click on layer two. 
and just change that to content. And you'll notice off to the left here, there are a couple of eyeballs here. These eyeballs let you control the visibility of each layer. So if I want to hide the background layer while I work on my content, I can just hit that eyeball and it makes it a little bit easier to work with things. You'll also notice there are some blank squares to the right of those eyeballs. Those let you lock layers. So that way, if you don't want to accidentally add something to the wrong layer, you can just lock it and it won't let you add shapes or do any editing whatsoever on it. So go ahead and hit the eyeball on the background layer and make sure you have the content layer selected and we're going to add some type. So go ahead and grab your type tool. It should be T on your keyboard. And go ahead and just click once. And type in confections. And with that type still selected, if you hit Command or Control A, that'll select your entire text. And we're going to go to the fill. And go ahead and fill it with that green color we made earlier. Next is if you look up in the top here, there is something that says character. Go ahead and hit that. And set the size to 52. And if you go up to where it says Myriad Pro or whatever your default font is, this is where we can change the font that we're going to use. Now I'm going to use a very specific font. You can download this font by just going to the Find More. If you have an active Adobe subscription, you can download all of the fonts that they have available. If you don't have an active Adobe subscription or if you don't have an internet connection right now, just go ahead and under fonts find a font that's similar to the one that we're about to use. Now if you're in the find more section and you want to use the same one I'm using, just up in the top here, go ahead and type in Montserrat. And the Montserrat that we're going to use is we're going to use the Montserrat light. Now you notice there are a bunch of these clouds off to the right here. If you click on that cloud, it will activate the font for you. So I've already downloaded I've already downloaded the font. So it's got a cloud with a check mark next to it telling me that's already been downloaded. If I wanted to deactivate that, I would just click on the cloud and it would deactivate it from my account. So go ahead and if you can activate Montserrat Lite. If you can't find that specific font or if you just don't have access to it, go ahead and in your pre-installed fonts, just find something that looks really similar to it. Look for something that's very uniform in width, uh, sans serif, and it's very thin. So go ahead and select that font. Make sure it's set to light. And then in your character panel, we're going to go over to tracking. Tracking is in the second column, second one down. And we're going to set that to 300. And that's just going to put some more space between our lettering here. All right, then go down to the fifth row. And you'll notice a symbol that has two capital T's next to it. Go ahead and hit that and it will make our text all caps. So now you can just deselect everything and leave the text where it's at. We'll move everything around once we have our individual parts made. So next is we are going to make a flower. So go ahead and where we had our rectangle tool, if you right click on it, it will give you a bunch of other tools that are nested with our rectangle tool. Go ahead and find the star tool. And what we're going to do is go ahead and click and drag out to make your star. But before you let go, hold command or control and drag outward until you have a polygon rather than a star. So I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller. And then what I'm going to do is, in order to make a flower really easy and really quickly, I'm going to go to Effect, Distort and Transform, Pucker and Bloat. 
So if you make sure that preview is checkmarked as you drag this dot along the slider, you can actually see what it's doing to your shape here. So I'm going to drag this towards 70% towards bloat. And then I'm going to hit OK. And what that does is technically we still have our polygon right there. It's just we've added a an effect to it that's making the anchor points get pushed into the center and bulging out the sides. So I want this to be a specific color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my swatches panel. And I'm going to make a new swatch. And again, it's going to be a process color. Set the color mode to CMYK. And the numbers I want to input for this are going to be 0, 55, 100, 0. And then just hit OK. And right now, with the way this is set up, is the color is on the fill. I actually want to change the color to the outline, so that way it has an orange outline and it's just an empty space inside of it. In order to switch those really quickly, I can just go over to my tool panel over to the left here. And you'll notice that your swatches down here are the two squares. Right above them to the right is this double-ended arrow. If I hit that, it quickly switches your fill and your stroke. And then I'm just going to resize my flowers so that way it's a little bit smaller around one inch. There we go. So I want it to be one inch by one inch. And I'm just going to make sure the stroke is set to one point. So once I set that up, I'm going to find my ellipse tool. And in the middle of my flower here, I'm going to hold Alter Option plus Shift and drag out to make my circle. Now, the way Illustrator sometimes works is it will remember the last settings or effects you used on a shape. So that's why I'm kind of getting this flower already off the bat. I don't want that to happen. I just want a regular circle. So I'm going to go to my Appearance panel. It should look like a sun. If you can't find it, just go to Window. In appearance and this is where all of your physical settings and any effects you have will be listed for a shape so you can see at the top of the list is pucker and bloat I'm just going to click and drag that to the trash can in the appearance panel and now I have a normal circle again so I'm gonna go back to my swatches and I actually want to switch it around so that way it has a solid fill and it doesn't have a stroke on it but I want to give this a different color. So I'm going to make a new swatch again. And this time, I'm going to need 0, 30, 70, 0. And it should give you this kind of pale, yellowy, orange color. I'm just going to hit OK. And now I have a new swatch, and my circle should have that fill color. So now that I have the flower, I'm going to go ahead and make a leaf. So I'm going to go back to my ellipse tool. I'm going to hold either Alt or Option plus Shift. And I'm just going to make a circle again. This time I'm going to go to my anchor point tool. You can get to that by hitting Shift C or by just finding your pen tool and right clicking on it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the top anchor point and I'm just going to click on that once, so that way it goes from a curve to a hard corner. And then with my direct selection tool, which is the white arrow, I'm going to grab both of these anchor points on the side here and just kind of drag them down a little bit. And I'm going to drag this top part up, and I'm going to drag this bottom anchor point down, so that way I have a teardrop shape. So once I have that, I'm actually going to set the fill to none. And on the stroke, I'm going to give it that green color we made. I'm going to make sure the stroke is set to 1. 
Then I'm going to find my arc tool. If you can't find it, look for your line segment tool and just right click. It should be underneath your type tool. And in the middle of my leaf here, I'm just going to add this line and I'm going to use my direct selection tool to change the curve of it. I'm just going to make sure that that line's going down the middle. So now I should have a leaf that looks like this with both this middle line and the leaf shape selected, I'm going to hit Command or Control G. So that way they're grouped together and no matter which one I select, it'll select both of them. I'm just going to bring it over to the flower. I'm going to resize it so that way it fits a little better. And I'm going to rotate it so that way it looks like it's coming off of the top of the shape here. Now I'm not going to worry about the overlapping or the fact you can see the lines quite yet. I'm just going to place the leaf where I want it to be first. Okay, so I want to add a second leaf that looks exactly like this one, just rotated slightly differently. So I'm going to select this leaf, hold either Alt or Option, and hit either your right or left arrow, just hit it once. Then I'm going to let go of Alt or Option and then I'm going to hit the opposite direction that I just hit. So I hit the right arrow, so now I'm going to hit the left arrow to put the leaf back into place. And I'm going to find my rotation tool. The shortcut for that should be R on your keyboard. And I'm going to click in the center of my flower here with that leaf still selected. And then once I've clicked, you'll notice a kind of crosshair appears where I clicked and then I can click outside of that and drag the leaf to where I want it to be. I want it to just be about 30 degrees off from the original and now I'm just going to go in and clean a couple things up so that way it looks like the flower is on top of the leaves here. So I'm going to select both leaves, right click, hit arrange, send it back and then I'm going to select this top leaf here, I'm going to hit plus on my keyboard and that's going to bring up my add anchor point tool and with this leaf still selected I'm going to add an anchor point right where that petal and leaf touches. I'm going to add another one over here and then one here as well so that way I am adding anchor points where it's intersecting with the flower and where I'm going to see it. Now I want this leaf to be the one that's technically layered on top so I'm not going to worry about adding any anchor points along here. So before I start editing it a little bit more I'm just going to select both leaves and make sure the stroke is set to one point sometime depending on your settings. If you have scale corners or scale stroke and effects turned on when you change the size of something it's going to change the stroke line proportionally. So that's why sometimes periodically I have to go back and make sure that my stroke is set to the width I want it to be at. So now that I've added those anchor points where I need them to be, I'm going to grab my direct selection tool and I'm going to select this section of the stroke that should be underneath the petal. And I'm just going to hit delete. And then I'm going to do that again for this part and then I'm going to switch over to my delete anchor point tool and just get rid of the rest of the shape using that method. And then I have to make sure I do that on the stroke here as well. The idea is we're getting rid of any lines that we wouldn't normally see underneath the petals or underneath the second leaf here. So I'm going to do the same thing with this, with this leaf here. I'm going to add anchor points to where I'm going to cut up the leaf. And then I'm going to go in and delete the segments that I don't want to see. So again, the way I did that is I just selected 
my shape, used my add anchor point tool, added anchor points where I wanted to break up the shape. And then I just went in with my direct selection tool, selected the parts of the segment that I wanted to delete, and then just deleted them. Now you might notice, depending on how you cut up your shape, there might be parts where it's kind of poking out from behind the flower. You can just go in with your direct selection tool and just edit the shape a little bit, or you can trim a bit more off if you need to. Just make sure that you aren't seeing any end parts kind of sticking out from behind this flower here. Once you're happy with how it turned out, go ahead and just select all these different parts and hit Command or Control G, so that way they're grouped together. And we don't have to make sure that we select every single part each time we use it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to convert this into a symbol. What converting it into a symbol allows for us to do is we can have multiple copies of this flower here. And if we ever need to make changes to it, we can just edit one of the shapes. And once we're done with it, it will apply those changes to all of the copies of that particular symbol. So go ahead and select our flower here. And go ahead and find your symbols panel. If you don't already have it off to your right, just go to Window and Symbols. And at the bottom of the panel, go ahead and hit the new symbol button. It's that square with the plus sign in it. And under Name, we're just going to name this flower. Go ahead and change the export type to graphic. These two distinctions don't really matter much for what we're doing. And then just leave it as a dynamic symbol. Hit OK. And now we have a symbol here. So if you go up to your symbols panel, you can see our flower we just made. Go ahead and click and drag it out into the canvas here. And do that twice. So at the end, you should have a collection of three flowers. And now you don't have to do this next part. I'm just doing it for demonstration. But if I wanted to edit say the middle circle here and I wanted it all to be pink now. Once I make those changes, it applies those changes to all the other flowers as well. So I'm going to go back to my layers panel. And I'm going to turn on the background layer again. And I'm going to select that layer. And I'm going to select the rectangle we made. And we're going to add a gradient to this shape here. So go ahead with the rectangle selected, find your swatches panel, select the fill. And then in your swatches, find the white black gradient. It's in the third row, third from the right. And it will add a fill or it will add a gradient to your fill here. But we want to edit the colors of this so that way it's not such a dark black and white. So go ahead and find your gradient panel. If you don't see it, just go to Window and Gradient. And then on the right stopper, so go ahead and just double click on that. And we are going to set the color to 9, 7, 9, 0. And it should be going from white to that color that we had earlier. So rather than just going from left to right on the gradient, we're going to change it to a radial gradient. So if you're back in your gradient panel, next to type, we're going to select that second option, which is the radial gradient. So now it should be a light white color in the middle, and it radiates out to that grayish green color that we made. So now I'm going to deselect everything and I'm going to make sure that I'm on my content layer. And let's say that there is a specific type of lettering you want to use, but you can't find a font for it. What you can do sometimes is you can just make a JPEG or a PNG where you've hand lettered the words you need. And then we can use Illustrator to change that into a vector shape that we can edit and change a little bit more. So I'm just going to go to File and Place. 
And in my lesson folder, I have a file that's called lettering asset one. It's a PNG. I'm going to select that, make sure the link is turned off. What that means is when we place the image, it'll be automatically embedded and it's not going to link back to the original file. So I'm just going to hit place. And I'll load up my cursor here. I'm just going to click out in the artboard, which is that gray area. I'm just going to click once and it will apply the image at full size. All right now, this is a pretty crisp file, but I want to be able to change the color of it, add a stroke to it, things like that. We just can't do it with the format it's in right now. So I'm going to go to my properties panel. And if you can't find it, just go to window and properties. And Illustrator has this image trace function, which allows you to convert a image into vector shapes. Now, depending on how complicated it is or how many elements are in the photo, it will have varying success rates. This is just a very simple one color lettering. So if I go to properties and go down to quick actions, there's an image trace button. I'm going to hit that. And I'm going to go to black and white logo. And it might tell you that this is a large file and it might take a little bit for your computer to work on it. Just go ahead and hit OK. And up in the top here, there is this button that looks like a panel. Go ahead and click on it. And this allows you to change some of the settings or how Illustrator is reading the image. So first thing we're going to do is go under to advanced and on paths, set that to 25%. We're going to set corners to zero. And each time you make a change, it might take a minute for your computer to catch up. That's all right. Again, paths should be 25% and corners are zero. And then make sure noise is set to 25 pixels. Next to options, make sure snap curves to lines is turned off. So we don't want that check mark there. And then make sure ignore white is turned on. So that way it won't give us that white background. And it'll just give us a transparent background with these lettering here. Once we've had our settings the way we want, I can just close that image trace panel. And under my properties panel, under quick actions, I can just hit expand. And now, this is a vector object with anchor points and bezier curves that I can edit. But more importantly, I can now change the color of it by selecting the fill. And then in my swatches, I'm just going to grab that green color we made. I also want to change the size of it so that way it fits in our rectangle a little bit more. I'm going to go to transform. And with that chain link still turned on, I'm going to change the width to 8.5 and then I'm going to go to file open and I'm going to open the AI file that was in my project folder. It's called Bumble AI. I'm just going to open that up and this is a Bumblebee graphic that we're going to use for our project here. I'm just going to select everything, hit command C or control C and then I'm going to go back to my project here. And I'm going to hit Command or Control V, and it will add our graphic to our project here. Now, the reason I wanted this to be a vector object rather than an image is I want to edit a couple of the shapes here. So it should already be set as a group. So in order to edit something within a group, you can either right click and just ungroup it, or if you double click on it, it goes to isolation mode. And that lets you select the individual parts of that group. So go ahead and pick these light yellow lines that are in the wings. And we're going to pick a different brush to give these a different effect here. So go ahead and find your brushes panel. If you can't find it, just go to Window and Brushes. And then down in the bottom left, there's something that looks like a bunch of books next to each other. Click on that and go to Artistic and then Artistic Ink. So if you scroll down, there's a brush here called Marker. 
and looks like this, go ahead and click on that with these lines selected. And at first it's going to look really messy and chaotic. Just go up to your stroke weight up here and go ahead and just set that to 0.25. And then get out of isolation mode by just clicking that arrow until that gray bar disappears. And you should see that our lines here have been changed to that marker brush. So if you don't want a traditional straight edge, there are a bunch of different kinds of brushes you can pick from and they all do different effects and get you different looks for your lines. So you can go ahead and close that brushes panel once you're done with it. And now we're going to rearrange everything. So I want Buzzy Bee to be near the top. I want to move Confections down to the bottom here. I want my B to be in between the two. And I'm going to move these flowers and arrange them around my B here. And you can rotate them to change the arrangement and to make them look a little less matchy-matchy. So there we go. Try and get the arrangement something similar to this. It's alright if you're not exact. I'm going to go ahead and lock my background layer. And I'm going to select everything on my content layer. I'm just going to hit Command or Control G. And then I'm going to go back to my Align panel. And I'm going to hit Horizontal Align Center. Make sure everything is set to Align to Artboard. I'm going to hit Align Horizontal Center. And I'm going to hit Align Vertical Center. So that way all my content is centered within our rectangle here. Once I have that set up, I'm just going to right click and hit ungroup. So that way they're their own individual objects again. I'm going to unlock my background layer. Now I'm going to add a effect to my rectangle here. So that way it looks like it has a drop shadow on it. So I'm going to go with this rectangle selected. I'm going to go to effect stylize and drop shadow. And I'll bring up this menu. Go ahead and set the blending mode to multiply. Opacity 30. Set the X and Y offset to 0 0.05 inches. And set the blur to 0 0.04. And then just leave the color as black. So if I click on that you can see it's just set to black. Be sure to save your work by going to File, Save, or Save As. If you would like to save this as a different file format, just go to File, Export, Export As, and that will give you the option to save it as a JPEG, PNG, whatever you'd like.